Oh yes, that 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 checks out. <laughs> okay, so hands up if you knew that the worst rated PC on Best Buy was gonna be one of these losers. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Deepcool and their AK620 CPU cooler. Now I've been using it in my personal system for a while and let me tell you, this cooler is a real quiet beefcake. Not only is the AK620 a beautiful cooler, but it's also easy to mount and with its dual 120 mm fans, it can handle pretty much any CPU you can throw at it without making much noise. So if you feel like stuffing a new huge CPU cooler in your case, the AK620 is a great option, especially considering that Deepcool is often offering five bucks off to anybody using the link in my description below. Now I've actually done a video on one of these before, in which I very affectionately dubbed it the Acer Loser Nitro Suckface Edition, cause you know, it was just that good. Uh, but this is a different spec, so let's crack it open and have a look at Best Buy's favorite pre-build. Ooh, there's some new things in here. So obviously there's the standard e-waste mouse, but in the bag, you actually get some additional SATA power and a SATA cable, so you can upgrade some hard drive space. Although obviously the connector is some weird alien technology. And then we also get a nice e-waste keyboard, which looks about as fun to use as a home colonoscopy kit. And that seems to be about it for accessories. And then here is the most important thing we get in the box, which is some patronizing gaming stickers. It's so light, actually, damn. Oh, it's upside down. Oh, it's so tiny. It's like a runty little animal and I can't quite decide if I want to protect it or eat it. Now, in terms of front IO, we've got a very long skinny power button two USB 3 ports and a microphone and headphone jack. And then it's got this tiny red chin under here, which I guess is so that they can mark it that it has airflow in the front. Although at least on the side, we do have this big ventilated panel, which I think is a good choice over going with like a glass side panel so that we don't have to look at its horribly deformed organs. And then around the back, we've got a tiny little fan, some USB ports and a graphics card, which is always exciting at this day and age. And then finally, the power supply uh, yeah. Now the inside of this little guy is about as predictable as the sun rising in the morning. We have our longtime favorite abomination, a single stick of RAM. And it is a single 8 gig stick that's rated for 3200 megahertz. Although it does seem like we've got a new cooler on here by Cooler Master, this is actually not the standard Intel cooler that OEM companies just screw to everything. Although that's not necessarily a good thing, it looks like they just replaced one abomination with another. And under this sad cooler, we do have a Ryzen 5 5600G. And it is a well-known fact that Ryzen loves single channel memory, so we should get some really good performance out of this. Oh, I actually feel like I should point out I was being sarcastic there. Using Ryzen with a single stick of RAM is kind of like trying to run a marathon right after an amateur hip replacement. But we'll do some performance tests later in the video. And despite that Ryzen 5600G having an iGPU in it, we do still get a graphics card, our old friend, the GTX 1650. Storage-wise, we've got a 512 gig NVMe drive, which is pretty roomy. In terms of the power supply, it seems like all the information other than just this parts number is blocked off behind a riveted on side panel. Although if you Google that parts number, you'll see that it is in fact a 500 watt 80 plus gold rated Chikoni power supply, which I've been told is a reputable manufacturer. Interestingly, it seems that that weird proprietary additional SATA power connector plugs into the motherboard over here. Uh, let's give it a try. Yeah, look at that. And then just like that, you've got this beautiful extra cable for additional SATA power. So yeah, as is always the case with the insides of these OEM systems, we have a whole bunch of proprietary landfill fodder hardware going on in here. Although, funnily enough, it is actually better than the previous generation of Nitro 50. And with that, let's put the side panel back on and see what kind of Windows installation we're working with, which is usually one of Acer's many Achilles heels. Ooh, 
Ooh, it's got a nice evil red glow on the inside, which I guess checks out considering the last time I used an Acer system, it did feel very possessed. Wait, what's Planet 9? Uh, um... Well, I, I guess this is just like gamer marketing or whatever. Okay, never mind. Now, in my experience, Acer systems normally have the Windows equivalent of a rabid dog installed on it, and we know that rabies is 100% fatal, so <laughs> hopefully they've improved with Windows 11. Uh, let's see what kind of VD we're working with here. I, I don't know, this, this, it's VD wise, I guess it's medium. Here we have our Ryzen 5 5600G with our single stick running at 3200 megahertz. Okay, that's good, that's good. And yeah, I'll, I'll definitely play around with the RAM configuration later in the video. Now we're starting with the game that I always start with, GTA 5. This is 1080p high-ish settings, I guess. This is a perfectly possible gaming experience. Granted, this is like a 98-year-old game, so it <laughs> it kind of should run well on a system that costs just under a thousand dollars. Although, uh, we can see that there is definitely a limitation in the system, because the graphics card is not running at 100% utilization, and uh, we know that it's not the CPU that's the limit, at least directly, because the CPU is not running at 100%. It's, it's the RAM. We're getting near to that full eight gigs of utilization. And because it's just a single stick, it, it always slows down the performance. But um, despite that, it's still very playable. Oh, and also temperatures are fine, uh, which again, I'm not surprised considering that we don't have very high power draw components in here and they're not doing much. So yeah, if, if the temperatures were very high, that would be an absolute outrage. Uh, but anyway, with that, let's try, let's try something a bit newer. Now, I've tried to be nice to the system here. Uh, we're running Battlefield 5 at 1080p medium settings. And, you know, give credit where it's due. It's, it's running decently. Oh, 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 big, oh no, big, oh, it's, it, what's happening? So I guess it's not running that great. <laughs> um, yeah, Cyberpunk. Let's see if it works. It's currently at 1080p low settings. Uh, yeah, let's, let's give it a try. It's not going great, but in all honesty, it, it's better than I was expecting. Yo, this car sucks. Is this the worst driving car in the game? Oh, and the big stutters are back. That's not ideal. Now, I think the main audience for this system is some parent buying their Fortnite kid a gaming PC. So, if in the stock configuration, it can run Fortnite acceptably at 1080p, then I guess it wins back a modicum of self-respect. I mean, I've definitely seen Fortnite run worse than this. For whatever that's worth. To be fair, I routinely use some of the worst systems known to man, so I, I don't think that's a... Um, a very high bar to cross, to be honest. Having said that, we have pretty consistently stayed above 100 frames per second, and in terms of input lag, I mean, it's better than using GeForce Now, so yeah, this is, this is perfectly usable. I won a Fortnite on the little loser Nitro suck face. Hell yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. And with that shocking upset, let's power down the system, throw in some new RAM and see how much of a difference that makes. That actually looks way better. That single gangrenous green stick around really stood out like a sore thumb. Wow, this BIOS looks like it's from 1752. Like, what? <laughs> like, what, what is the point of this BIOS even? Like, why do they even give you access to this? You basically can't do anything in here. Yeah, okay, so this is the first problem. Uh, we can't do anything about the RAM speeds. So chances are, 
we're gonna get one of two RAM speeds when we boot into Windows. It's gonna be either 2400 megahertz or 2666 megahertz, both of which are just aren't great. Um, so let's see which one we get. A few moments later. I was wrong. We got 2133 megahertz, yeah, which is even better. I, I can't believe it somehow managed to give me a lower number than I was expecting. That is... <laughs> Hey, that's made a pretty big difference. Uh, you can see that now the GTX 1650 has become the bottleneck because of that 99% utilization, uh, which is kind of what you want in a system. And uh, the RAM utilization has very quickly jumped over that 8 gigs. So yes, a single 8 gig stick is is bad. Uh, it's, it's not something you want in your PC. And uh, we see that every single time we, we do this. And then the final thing I want to talk about is the negative reviews of this PC on Best Buy's website. There were two of them, the only two reviews about this system, uh, and the two people were varyingly unhappy with their Acer Loser Nitro Sockface Edition PC. So the first one was saying that in its stock configuration, the PC will definitely give you shingles. Although, once you do some key upgrades to it, the, the likelihood of it giving you shingles reduces. Uh, which checks out, I mean we did kind of show that in this video. Now the second comment, however, was saying that after about a month of use, the PC became gradually slower and worse to the point that it's basically unusable. And I think that that also makes sense considering that it's, a, it's an Acer system, so there's definitely some Elma action happening in there. And I can imagine that it gets worse over time. Now that's the kind of thing that's really difficult to test in a video where you spend three days testing a system. So what I'm gonna do and I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I am going to replace my main gaming system at home, which I use a lot, and it's it's this bad boy that showed up a couple videos ago. I, I really love this PC, but I am going to replace it for at least a month w with this thing, uh, just to see what longer term Elma exposure does. If you don't want to miss that video filled with David Elma suffering, subscribe to the channel. That video will come out in about a month and a half, depending on how the test goes, I guess. And uh, yeah, with that, thank you for watching. If you want to watch the first video that I did on this original Acer Loser Nitro Sockface Edition, it'll pop up in a second. And uh, yeah, until the next video, bye-bye.